when I was asked to bring a, uh, a message this morning, past week, I really, uh, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what is it that uh, we can share? And I really felt that uh, the Lord impressed on my heart, and the word that he gave me, he said, he, he, he said uh, let the worship be the message. Let the worship be the message. You know, the word of God says that when we worship Him, we should worship Him in spirit and in truth. And you can take that portion of scripture and make it in. You can see it so hard. How do I worship in spirit and in truth? But really, it's so simple. You see, when we come to a place into a relationship with God, our spirit is revived. Our spirit is revived. And so, to be able to worship God in spirit is just being real with God. Being real with God. Taking that truth part of that scripture and just coming to God as you are, in the reality of who you are, who He created you to be. You see, as we go into some words of praise this morning, the other thing the Lord said to me was that and I want to try and impart this to you this morning, is that praise and worship is such a powerful weapon. It's such a powerful weapon that sometimes we overlook because we go to the prayer side and we go to the fasting side. But to praise and worship the Lord in times when we are somewhat troubled, it is a powerful weapon, one of many in the arsenal that God gives us through His Word. Can you hear me this morning? And so there's a portion of Scripture in Psalms 150, from verses 1 to 6. And it says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty firmament. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him for His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. You see, it's almost like he's, it's a, it's a, a, a with praise, it's a tool that He's saying, it, it, no matter what you have at your disposal, you can praise Him. Praise Him with the lute and harp. Praise Him with the uh, timbrel and dance. You may not be a good singer, but I tell you what, you can probably step out a bit of a dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Praise Him with clashing cymbals. Let everything, let everything that has breath, Praise Him. And so this morning, I want to encourage you to be part of the message. I'm limited by this cord here. And if it gets too short, I'm just going to throw it off. <laughs> okay? So I want you to be part of the message this morning. So if you want to stand this morning, stand. If you want to dance, dance. It doesn't matter what the person is. Are you hearing me this morning? Come on.
Have you ever thought about that? Because you know, my Bible, when I was at school, I learned that uh, there's a, a North Pole and a South Pole. But I never learned that there was an East or a West Pole. And when you look at that, it, uh, what's it really saying? It's saying that, you know, when we come to the Lord, when we just surrender to God, surrender all our hurts, our pains, our hardships, He casts it as far as the East is to the West. So there is no distance. It is gone, man, I'm telling you. It's gone. Yeah, we go through trials and tribulations sometimes. But you know, praise is a powerful weapon, as I said. It's a powerful weapon. In John chapter 4 and verses 23, the Word of God says this, But the hour is coming, and is now here, when the true worshippers will worship the Father of Spirit and the truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. He's just looking for people that are going to be real with Him. He's looking for people that aren't going to just put on a facade. Aren't going to put on a face mask on Sunday. And there'd be something else Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. He's looking for people that's just going to be honest with Him. And talk to Him like I'm talking to you this morning. And say, Lord, I'm not perfect. I've got troubles in my life. But Lord, I want to be real with you because I know that you're a real God. So what do you do when you become overwhelmed? What are you going to do when you become troubled? What are you going to do when you become depressed? Because things aren't working out the way you thought they were going to work out. What are we going to do, friends? Well, there's the weapon of praise and worship. Amen. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. And um, they asked us to just be a part of what's happening in the music. We went to the down and then we can hear the voices. And I think that's going to happen even more. More participation. Because I believe the Lord has shown me there's going to be deliverances happening. Deliverances. You know, don't just come here and just sing a nice song. I mean, we're going to bring those problems into the moment and bring this moment into your situations, into your lives into your homes and see the deliverances taking place. See the salvation taking place. See God, God just rising up, rising up through your praises. Claim that victory. Take a hold of it. Stamp the devil under your feet in Jesus' name.
2 Chronicles chapter 17, 18, 19, and 20. And he speaks about King Jehoshaphat. He was a king of Judah. He was the son of David. We all know David, King David. And he was he was a great man in that day. He followed in the things of the Lord as his father did. He went around all of Judea and he, he established garrisons, watchmen and women to see what would be coming into his territory. And he sent out many wise, faithful men to go and to preach the gospel and to teach song out in the land. But there came a day when he was going to be tested. You see, and we were all going to be tested. None of us are immune from being tested. Often you read in the word of God that God sends some a plumb line to measure Jerusalem. To measure the width and the breadth. Now you look at that. He sends a plumb line to measure the width and the breadth. If I was to stand like that, what do you see? You see me, but I'm also doing the sign of the cross. And so God is measuring to see how much of Jesus is in your life. And so Jehoshaphat was being tested this day. And there, there arose an army. The Moabites, the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat. And friends, what did he do? See, he had reigned for so many years without any problem, without any uh, troubles. All of a sudden, these armies come against him. The Bible says he was fearful and he fell to the ground and sought the face of God. Second Chronicles 20, verse 3. And he prayed, O oh Lord, you're the one that has sustained us all these years. What can I possibly do? said to him, listen to what the Lord said to him. He says, listen all ye of Judah, all the inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat. Do not be afraid nor dismayed for the battle is not yours for the battle is mine. And we need to get that into our spirit into our minds that the battle belongs to the Lord. And with this, in Chronicles, uh, 2 Chronicles 20, verses 18 and 22, King Jehoshaphat and Jerusalem and all the Levites bowed before the Lord and worshipped. Worshipped the Lord. Praising the Lord in a loud voice. I don't know if you know much about the Levites, but they were a, they were a nation of praise and worship warriors and they used to be sent out the Levites used to be sent out before a battle and they used to begin to go in song and in, and in worship before God and you know during that time they just began to worship God they began to praise God honour God give God the thank they didn't even look at the, the armies they weren't too fucked about the army. Devil, devil, what, what devil? Just hang on. Devil, you can worship with me if you like. Come along. And when they finally, finally opened their eyes, the armies were there. They'd been defeated by God. Through praise and through worship. Amen? It's not going to be a formal closed this morning. We're going to get to some worship. 
worship God for what He does, eh?
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, that it will come again, Lord, at our communion table. That it will come again to have a meal, one with another, Lord God. We thank you for everything you do, everything you are, everything that you give us. Thank you.